folk can hear me. Let us participate in lettuce. We will begin in just a couple minutes. One post, perhaps two, and then we shall be. Indeed, indeed. Let us see if we are not. We'll get better as this every single time. Oh, it indeed does say story time. Okie dokie, here we go. All right, indeed. Well, hello everybody. Welcome to Goblin Storytime. We shall begin. Today is a chalk-packed episode of lots of chalk and packed, and we're starting off five minutes early, as we do in Belagarth Standard. <laughs> uh, so welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to... Well, I guess since we've got some folk here... Um... As I apologize, Banjax, for the ads. We have a special announcement here coming soon, which you may enjoy. Uh, I would like uh, everybody to give me a hello in the chat if you think my audio sounds okay. Um, I just want to make sure that I sound all righty. Okay. This is the Bench Network Presents Goblin Storytime, an Under the Mushroom Cap production. Um, narrated by me hello everybody my name is long uh doc warmaster cord t goblins wmwd mc llc but you can simply call me cord um that is me hello i am green sometimes uh today we've got there's an ad okay thank you what the what what a bummer Okay, well, Banjax, please let me know when the ad goes away. Very stinky ads. In the meantime, I'm going to crack a little thingy with Jiggy. Okay, free from ads. Wonderful. Hopefully, everybody is free. I have had sip of the go go juice. My name, is, the, the, the Goblin Story Times, narrated by me. And. It, Lots of help along the way, but it's narrated by me. My name is Long. Uh, I'm going to say it again. Doc War Master Court, T Goblins, W M W D M C L O C. Nobody really calls me Cordovan. I prefer it that way. It's weird. Uh, you can just simply call me Cord. Uh, preferable. Um, the special segment. Hello, everybody. Today, I. Oh, no. I might need to fix that. I'm the right color. We're trying out a new, a new, a new getup here. We'll, we'll see how this goes. Um, hello, everybody. I'm glad you're free. I need to fix a couple of things, but we'll make that happen here in a second. But my name is Cord High, and I have a friend. His name is Forkbeard, and I love him very much. He has a wonderful son and a wonderful uh, partner, who a wife who I love also, whose name is Lilith, and he is going through some cancer. And any support would be hugely, hugely appreciated. Um, he's got a Facebook page and a GoFundMe. And if you go to his Facebook and you are his Facebook friend, and you get to see his wonderful uh, captain's log he is submitting daily. And he's a trooper. And Forkbeard, this, we, we love you, bro. Keep, keep doing the do. You're going to kick its ass. Now, um... Today is going to be a really fucking long episode, friends. I'm going to be completely honest. I'm going to look at you. I'm going to let you know. Today is going to be long. I think it might be two hours. So I just want to give that prefix 
Uh, at the very end, we're going to have a fun little video. So if you stick around that long, cool. What do you guys think of me being my appropriate color? It feels good. Okay. So, uh, yes, please go to the Facebook page. There's a link to the GoFundMe on my event page and support Forkbeard. We'd really, really appreciate it. All righty, everybody. <laughs> We're getting right into it. And your, your goblin boy has good notes. I have, I have a good notes. And I have something very special, which I'll talk about. And I have bad quality liquor. Thank you, Banjax, for posting. Banjax has posted the link uh, to the GoFundMe. Eventually, I'll figure out how to have comments uh, and the chat up so you guys can see it. You know what? Okay, everybody, I need you to take a moment, close your eyes. I'm going to disappear for a second, but while your eyes are closed, I want you to, to just think about how lucky you are to be here, be surrounded by cool people, get to listen to weirdos, talk about goblin stories online, and know that Belagarth has brought some joy into your life, because you're all great, and I love you, and I need my fingers not be the wrong freaking color. Okay, I'm back. I appreciate the patience. Oy, 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 oy. Thank you, Van Jax, for what am I doing? Oh, that's right. I have hood. Okay, this is just how it goes. So today is so much better. Okay, so I have notes. I'm very excited about today. Today is going to be long. I appreciate you all being here. This is just going to be one more audio check. Is audio good? Can everybody hear the audio sounds? And have a safe head to practice. Oh, kitty cat. See, OK, fantastic. Thank you, Senor Picos. So today, I would like to first tell you Announcement of new structure. We're going to do something called Monsters Doing Cool Shit. Um, today, we're going to do that later. But later, we're going to maybe do that earlier. We'll see what the crowd wants to do. We got announcements towards the end of the episode. Stick around. OK. So don't judge me for my beverage choice. It was not really a choice. It's just what I had from party thing. So today we're going to talk about something that is extraordinarily dear to me. Um, like on a serial, serial note, which is, okay, pause. We're going to do part of the announcement now, part of the announcement later. Announcement number one, there's this really cool thing going on in the Chroniclers Guild, which is the Nano Remo competition, writing competition hosted by Banjax. And for those of you that haven't seen that yet, basically there are some prompts and you enter the prompts and then you have the potential to win in a raffle. And also the most liked story by the community will win something. And I will like to pitch out, I am actually gonna throw in a $10 gift card to Steam on top of Banjax's already awesome 
uh, prize. There you go, Banjax. Love this competition. So I'm going to back this with a $10 uh, Steam gift card, and I believe Brazen is also making a change. So this is going to be legit, guys. Uh, please spread the word out of the Chronicler's Guild and out of the story time to fellow Bellagram. You don't have to be a guild member to do this, but every Bellagram can be a guild member if they just go on the guild, announce it, and add themselves to the Geddon. Brazen er, is going to make sick-ass chains. Banjax hosted. I did the announcement. Hopefully that did it justice, Banjax. I'm very excited. Uh, there's the information. Banjax posted it. Just because of the length of the video, I'm not going to go too much into detail. You can read it all there. But please check that out. It's going to be awesome. Okay. Well, I realize I have no idea if the song played. Did story time play, friends? If it didn't play, that's okay. We're not going to do it today. I really like it. Hannah did a wonderful job. I just, I, I want to get into this. So I'm going to start this whole thing by saying, <clears throat> Hello. Hmm. Okay. And now I will say, it has been brought to my attention that some people, one person, thinks that I was posturing last episode when speaking about Cadiz. I was posturing last episode when speaking about Cadiz. I want people to know how awesome they are, but I also want them to know how awesome witch doctors are. So just to clear the air there, that was totally the point. I did it purposefully. Ha ha! I am good at things. Okay, with that out there, uh, I love you, Stellar. You're great. Oh, by the way, everybody in the chat, wish Stellar a happy birthday. And everybody on YouTube, you should wish Stellar a happy birthday, too. If anybody watches these things on YouTube, you guys are the goats, because that would be really cool. If you can't tell already, I'm excited about today's episode. Today's episode, <clears throat> today's episode we're going to talk about goblin witch doctors. And I was initially going to make this a part of my um, episode last week, and I realized, no, 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 I really want to give this time. And the truth is, yeah, it's gonna freaking need it. Um, I want you guys to know a couple things. So I'm gonna give you the structure, and then we're gonna go into it, and then it's gonna be awesome. I'm very excited about today. So. First, we're going to tell you some things that you should know. A nice, fun story. And then I'm going to talk about witch doctors. The who, the what, the why, the how, the where, etc. Then I'm going to tell you a little story, which is essentially a rant of mine in story form. I like it. And then I'm going to tell you some cool things that I was able to accomplish, which is that's actually bullshit. Let's be much, much more clear. The Cabal actually got together and talked and magic happened, which it's like, duh, we knew that was going to happen. Anywho, some cool stuff is coming down the pipe for Witch Doctor, not coming down the pipe. This is kind of the announcement of it. So huh, you guys are here first. Woo! Um, then we're going to talk a little bit about historic Witch Doctors and the uh, ages of the world. We're going to talk about importance in Belagarth of RP. We're going to talk about other RP titles. And please, if I miss any, add them to the chat. Holy crap, guys, I actually have a structure to this episode. Where is the chaos? So, we will begin with a story. But I'm not going to tell you this story like I would normally do where I'd go to the Gedon and I would read the words and make sure you guys knew that these were the stories from the Gedon. No, not this time. This time you get it raw. Well, that's actually not true. I have it pulled up. But you get it raw from me. <laughs> and here's why. Who is Sifu? Sifu is one of the five great goblins. Why are we talking about Sifu? Because she was the first goblin witch doctor there ever was. So what is Sifu? Well, Sifu is, in this moment, a giant six-armed goddess of the underworld. She essentially took Anubis's place. That's at least what I like to think. And she's really badass. But she was not always six-armed giant goddess. No. No, she was not always the queen of the underworld and the... the, 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 the no. 
long time ago, she was just a goblin. But it wasn't just a goblin. As being one of the first five great goblins, she was a true goblin and a really, 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 really good badass goblin at that. There are two stories. But the truth is simple. At least the one I heard is simple. Sifu was one of the five great goblins. And when she was alive as just a goblin, she had a tribe. And she also had kind of like a fling affair with one of the other five great goblins, Scribbit, who became enamored by this wonderful magic user. She also had a little sister, but we'll talk about her a little bit later. Sifu was really smart, cunning. She was really powerful. She was a good swordsman, but she preferred to use her innate mind. And she knew that goblins had magic, but this was a time where mag goblins didn't really use magic. They used their martial power. They killed by their will alone, remember, but they prefer to fight, and so did she. But during the Great War, things got nasty, and when Balk became a betrayer, Sifu knew that something had to happen. So while the final big battle was happening, she and Scribbit left and went down into the underworld to face Balk and find him at the River of Sticks. It's where she was tricked by Anubis. Anubis said, ha ha, you'll be able to get to him better with more power, as he is giant maw-eating beast now, uh, if you switch places with me. But actually that trapped her in the underworld. She can't get past him. It's Two, you know, we've got Valk on one side and you've got the gate and then you've got Sifu on the other. It's a challenge. So, now to be fair, scholars differ very heavily on where exactly Valk is positioned on the river and where exactly Sifu is. But ultimately, the unknown, undeniable is that they can't get to each other. I wonder how many people. Cool. So, Sifu... Um, got really upset with the fact that she didn't have good magic. And before she went into the underworld, she said, we need to find some control over this innate magical power that we have. And so she went to Mama Pizron and she said, Mama Pizron, can we have magic? And Mama said, no, haha, -ha, get fucked goblins, I hate you, and then ran away. And Sifu was having none of it. And Sifu being very strong, very wise goblin, grabbed the scruff of Mama Pizron, pulled her and smashed heads causing big, big crack, and the big, big crack caused, well, very simply, the blood to smell. And when the blood transferred between Sifu and Pizron, Klohaka was born. We'll talk about that a little later. But uh, very simply put, goblins began to be able to have the ability to control their innate magic a little more. And we can talk about goblin magic if the right question comes up. So... Sifu's trapped now in the underworld, but she's already trained a bunch of witch doctors. And then most of them end up dying in the Great War and in the years to come during the Age of Retreat. There are no more, really, just ones or two. But what is a witch doctor? Well, Sifu being the first witch doctor gives us an idea of what uh, what a witch doctor is. A witch doctor is cunning. A witch doctor is wise. A witch doctor is a little secret. A witch doctor sometimes tells lies. You never really know with a witch doctor if it'll help or harm. But I'll tell you what, if you give a witch doctor your arm, things can happen. I have noticed that in goblin mythology, witch doctors play the role of the wizard, the Merlin figure in a lot of ways. And what they are is spell slingers and smooth tongues. Often they weren't loved by goblin tribes or they led very small ones because you see, it's really, really simple. Lots of witch doctors were crazy. They heard whispers that they couldn't understand from the moon and from the babies. Not really the babies, you see though. But Maleshikad, because it's in our blood, at least I believe it is. The innate magical power that comes from being created by the one that created nearly all is not undeniable. 
or at least to me it is undeniable excuse so that's kind of what a witch doctor is in the stories and we have lots of story representation of witch doctors they created baubles and trinkets and assortments oh my you really never know um what the goblin witch doctor might do but sifu was the first of them you see and her symbol is usually a rage spiral of some kind with six arms and a triangle for a body you see it all the time i don't have a picture i don't know why but this is a beautiful drawing of a witch doctor a goblin witch doctor and you see the red mark that red mark represents sifu smashing her head with uh Pizron and cracking skulls so this is goblin witch doctor What is a goblin witch doctor in our mundane reality? Uh, goblin witch doctors are, if I recall correctly, the original and first monster um, non-fighting, like lore-based title. Our role is to keep, preserve, maintain, and uh, evolve the lore of goblins in Belagarth, which is the largest collection of monster lore in what is a not larp really we are a larp for sure but we don't have any overarching story so the thing that the goblins have done with that is, is quite unique uh, ogres and some others have begun to do the same but historically speaking and, and let's just say it's a fucking reality now uh we do it best so what is the, the witch doctor's role in the game? The witch doctor's role in the game is to know the stories, to share the stories, to support and grow goblins. But the goblins are very easy to make. <laughs> we There are lots of us, and we grow and we create more because we have fun. So really, it's not just monster or, or goblins, but it's monsters in general that's keeping this story alive. That's the role I believe witch doctors have. I also believe witch doctors have a role to up the level of characterization and kit and all of that in Bell as well. Kind of if you look at what Kodite has done, it's really inspired me a lot to up my kit as well. And that's the goal. It's one of the reasons that I am my appropriate color this evening is to show that, right? That's kind of what a witch doctor is in the game. We're here to be guides. We're here to be shepherds, damn near. And I wanted to extend beyond just monster culture, or beyond just goblin culture, but we go one step at a time. Yes, we do, we do. We go one step at a time. Goblin story time is live. You can share it with your friends if you'd like. You never know. So who are the, the goblin witch doctors? We've actually had not many. The very first goblin witch doctor was known as Scrade. We've talked about her on this uh this year goblin story time before scrades was one of the first great goblins and she is the root of much of our stories and then from scrade came kazi and and kazi the ancient we talked about last episode as a kadin well he's before kadin he was witch doctor in 06 long 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 ago and he is the one who helped bring out the trials and the stories making it what it is now from kazi came div i believe div was 08 she has resigned her post and fell into the sifu spirit into the river of souls where the once a witch doctor always a witch doctor from div there came no but from kazi some more he made galia and salamander in i think 2014 Maybe earlier, maybe 2012. And from Galia came two, Hixa and Gadget. I believe the year was 16 when they gave their vigils. And finally, me, under the tutelage of Salamander, with a line that stretches all the way back to the beginning of the witch doctors of at least the Age of Unification. Ah, uh, came me under Salamander, and I completed my Witch Doctor Vigil in 2017. There have been none since. So those are who we have the Goblin Witch Doctors. Uh, we've all told a different story for our Vigil, and I will explain a little how it goes, but 
um, that's kind of where we're at right now with the Witch Doctors. And so I want to talk a little bit, and I'm actually happy this is going uh, nice quick, nice quick. So I wanted to talk a little, little bit about um, kind of like how you become a Witch Doctor. And the, and the first com the, the, the complication there is it's quite a little bit different than the Kadeen, right? You don't have to compete in games to earn your spot. You must actually be chosen. And there's some reasons for that, one of which is the complexity of the apprenticeship, and then the other is just the devotion. I don't really know how to explain why, but I did not make the rule. They came, they came, that is the way. The Bavarette. We talk a little bit about how a witch doctor is made right now. So we are the storytellers, we're the magic users, we're the sometimes leaders of tribes. More often than not, we're pariah and kind of off in our own with a small group of witch doctors. In order to become a witch doctor, you must be chosen as an apprentice in this current moment before the story I tell you. Um, you must be green for a year. This is on the Geddon. I'm just going to read it from the Geddon. Oh no, more ads. What the poop, poop. Well, I'm going to keep going anyways. So, you must be green for a year. You must make your own unique, wonderful pickles. Okay, pause. Pickles, go ahead and ask your question. All eyes on you, giant. We're waiting. Okay, anywho, I will continue all pickles. I don't want to wait till pickles can ask his question when he does. So you got to make your own unique garb, usually a coat coat or a trench coat. No. By the letter of the law, I believe Scraid was the first goblin witch doctor of Belagarth. However, it is Kazi said by the moon that Kazi is the one who rebirthed the ancient trials. So, kind of yes. I don't believe Scraid went through any sort of these things. I think Scraid just was a witch doctor, if that makes sense. So you gotta make, be green for a year, make your own piece of unique goblin garb, usually a cloak or trench coat, make your own unique goblin witch doctor staff, create a unique goblin story and tell it at your goblin witch vigil, which is supposed to be a hour long story about goblins, goblindom and lore. Um, it has to be an hour uninterrupted and you must not include any, excuse me, you can't have notes. And ideally it's told firelit to a drunk crowd. It's actually pretty hard. And then, you know, you can be identified by this red strip. You see this red strip? This identifies me as a goblin witch doctor. And you can see the witch doctors will have it. So, um, really quickly, I just want to show you some of the modern witch doctors before we jump into it. So this is a cool drawing. I don't really know who drew it, so I apologize. But this is a wonderful drawing of Salamander, witch doctor Salamander, my teacher. And this is a wonderful drawing from Ear Tech uh, of an ancient goblin witch doctor. And this is witch doctor Kazi and Kadin, but at the time Kadar Tonberry during Kadar Tonberry's, I believe, crossroads. Uh, this is another wonderful witch doctor drawn by Ear Tech. And you can kind of see we do have this magical powers. And, you know, but the goblin magic, Tonberry says it's really well. Goblin magic is like a child with a hand cannon. Or giving a, a child an automatic rifle. They might be able to make it fire, but it's not always going to go where they want it to. Uh, this was a very satisfying moment, although it is missing a couple people. Uh, but this was my successful uh, mission of getting the Goblin Witch Doctors together at an event. This is Oktoberfest. This is myself. And then Witch Doctor Galia. And, and then Witch Doctor Salamander. And then Witch Doctor Kazi. That was fun. Um, so this was during the witch doctor meeting where what I will tell you here soon comes from. Um, this is me and witch doctor Hixa. He's awesome. 
Uh, this is Witch Doctor Hexa. He's pretty pretty dope witch doctor he does goblin a little different you know he grew up with a lot of pinkies and sometimes wears pink toes but you know what we don't judge we support our goblin buddies um the reality is his tribe's just slightly different and that makes a lot of sense to me uh, also a fantastic artificer congratulations shout out to dr hixa for becoming a master artificer woot woot uh also dr hixa right that's a motherfucking goblin you see that red line I dig it, right? And that's how you kind of identify. You can also see the Pisseron symbol on the gorget, his gorget. This is Witch Dr. Galia. Again, you see that line. Uh, this is also Witch Dr. Galia. And this is Witch Dr. Gadget. Witch Dr. Gadget uh, is a really old Horde Skull. That Horde Skull, that belt flag is very old belt flag. Again, you see the red line. Um, and this is Witch Doctor Salamander and Galia, and then Witch Doctor Gadget over there sacrificing this a uh, very worthy Grick of sacrification. Um, so that was good. Uh, and this is Witch Doctor Kadim Kazi. Well, this is Witch Doctor Kazi. You see the red line, and then this is this over here is Kadim Kazi. You see he won a single blue tournament, and so you kind of get an idea. Um, and this is also uh, Witch Doctor. Kadim Kazi, and you see that the belt flag that is Scourge. Scourge belt flag is very cool. And this right here, can you guess what this is? This is Neb, Nebud Kadnezar. This is the Neb head. Poke, 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 hee, hee, hee. So, oh, look, so we've got Kadim Shai, Kadim Tonberry, and who is that? That's me. That is me, Witch Doctor Cord. Yes, you see, I have big staff. And you see on my on my drapery, on my war skirt, you see the symbols, the goblin symbols. Yes, yes, yes. It's good, it's good. And I know I sound a little bit like a skaven sometimes. Don't say shit. It's not my fault that I sound like a skaven sometimes. So, um, this is Witch Dr. Salamander, my teacher. And this is, this is, I'm so happy I'm about to say this, but this is Apprentice Bat B. B. Jones. Bad Biba Jones is an apprentice. Uh, yes, Kazi is currently the only witch doctor Kadin. I am the only witch doctor war master. I believe the other witch doctors do not possess uh, scribbit based combat titles. Uh, yeah, he's pretty legit, I got to say. Um, yeah, so Bad Biba Jones, this is, uh, this is Bat Bones, and Bat Bones is actually Salamander and the whole Cabal, and we'll talk about that's current apprentice. Uh, Slippery, when Slippery does his shit, is, uh, is going to maybe be Witch Doctor, maybe not be Witch Doctor, but I'll shout out to Slippery, he's a great goblin, and my apprentice for a long, long time. But, you got to do your stuff, buddy, otherwise just be Trash Goblin, it's a good thing, because you're the best of it, and this isn't like be a Trash Goblin, no, 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 it's Trash Goblin, that's like a, it's a thing. It, it's a good thing. So this is a shout-out. This is not a boo-boo. This is a shout-out. So, anywho, Bad B. Jones, Doc Salamander. I think that's Toad Fist on the side. It's cool. Uh, excellent picture of Hixa. Doc the Hixa being an absolute badass. The bro is the bro. Uh, you see the big ears. Sometimes fun ears work. I don't judge. Salamander being Salamander. Oh, my goodness. And, yes, yeah, so that's actually Dr. Earth. Well, it's me. And then there's uh, Dr. Kazi, Dr. Dr. Kazi doll, and then there's Draco doll. Draco doll is silly. So, I just wanted to show you guys some witch doctors. So those are like the modern witch doctors. We talked a little bit about like why witch doctor. Um, we talked a little bit about how to become a witch doctor now, but I'd like to, to tell you guys a story. So, um, it's fucking story time, yo. <laughs> like, are you ready? This will give me time to pull up stories. Oh, Hopefully it's not too much. Okay, we'll jump right into it. So, the final light of the day sends its auburn rays through slitted windows. 
the light illuminating the cobbled floor of the tower. A goblin clothed in the black robes of pandemonium stomps about, waving his hands and arms in frustration. The time is now, the goblin says loudly. We are Sifu's chosen. All that is, was, and ever will be is studied in this tower. You see the Kadeen, their gates and their games, the younglings oogling the bandoliers with the hopes of joining Skirbit's priesthood. Yet the doors to Cheetah's tower remain closed, the halls empty, no screams of pained lessons, no apprentices honing their craft, no whispers from the magic taker, only silence. As the final light of the day faded to darkness, the goblin snapped his fingers and the candles burst into flame, their flickering light casting ominous shadows across the room. It is time to remind them of who we are and why we are here. Why are they who carry, oh, we, not why, we are they who carry her message, her magic, her rage. We are Vox Doom. Empires rise and fall by our will. Without challenge, the mantle of office is seeked by no one. In the age of Sifu, would she have allowed Kadins, well, Kadars, to outshine her apprentices? Never! The goblin slowed his voice and lowered his tone. Almost to a whisper, Goblin ASMR. And so, my esteemed doctors, I propose a challenge, a change. Let those who seek our tutelage prove the will of Sifu runs through their veins. Let us see who can speak can cast, who can hold the old ways, find the tower, and complete Sifu's labors. The goblin slowly paced the circle, the candlelight revealing the blood-red marks on the foreheads of those seated around the center of the room. I propose the challenge of Sifu's labors, the test of six arms. The opening of the eyes to the powers at large. I speak, and the darkness listens. Dear doctors, can't you see? Meleshikad's eyes now open, and a new age it soon shall be. And so I did. Grabbing them one by one making them listen to why a new age will come. And to prepare for a new age, a change was needed, and so we have a rework. God, I don't know what else to, to do to rhyme. It was like I was on one there, I lost it. But do we got a rework, Goblin Witch Doctor rework. I'm so excited. So this is what I've been waiting for to like talk about for a hot minute. Time stamp, 39, oh, we're gonna do 40. Bam! Okay, cool. We're going to start now. We have a Goblin Witch Doctor rework. So what we have done is we've gotten together and we've discussed, okay, lots have changed in the Goblin mythos, and it's time to revamp this trial that was started literally when I was in the sixth grade. How do we make this a meaningful, challenging, impressive feat that not rivals, but equals the Kadin in the dedication and the willpower needed to complete it? It is a completely different set of skills and it teaches a completely different set of lessons. They are not the same thing. They are not meant to be. They're not in comparison with each other. However, the standard that Kadin presents is one of ferocity. It is one of ooh and ah. 
It is one of, holy fuck, I don't want to fucking do that. Wow, that's crazy. Fuck that shit. That's that's for weirdos like Kazi and Shy and Tonberry. Like, no thanks, right? I want that. I don't want somebody to go, well, I don't really want to do this thing, but I'll do that thing. And thank you for lighting the fire under my ass and to make something real. And it was real, and what I did was real. And I'll tell you about my story if you ask, but I'll tell you. My vigil was simple, right? I spent a fucking year dedicating myself to goblins. And I have spent the last eight years doing it again. I learned the ways, and I learned the stories, and I spoke. I created the accoutrement, the staff, and I told them. But is that enough? It is. It was. But no more shall it be. We change. There are now three ceremonies and six labors. I will tell you the rework and explain to you all how this shall be. It is what it is, you see. The three ceremonies and six labors go as such. Receiving the book ceremony. This is where the cabal picks an apprentice and the lead mentor will make and give the apprentice a book. This was given to me at my vigil by which Dr. Salamander. This is my book. And then there are six labors. Labor number one is the labor of will. You must be a goblin, not for one, but for two years, really forever. But it is the dedication to being a goblin. But it's not just to paint, because painting isn't for everybody. So it's a be a goblin. Prosthetics, the mask, the paint, something, right? Be goblin, really identifiably goblin by somebody who isn't a goblin for two years. Labor of will. Labor of tools, the staff or wand you must make, and the garb, the cloak, the you must make. And I really like to say it goes further than that. You must make it yourself, and the way you make it must have influence. Like my staff is a lexicon. You learn the night goblin language by reading it. You see, I use it as a teaching tool. I show the symbols of the gods. That is what I, my garb has the same thing, right? That is what I hope the labor of tools allows. The labor of knowing is you need to know your shit. You need to know the goblin stories. You need to know the histories and the times. You need to know what is here and there and everywhere. Not everything, but much. You must know some things about goblins. We are live now. You must know some things about trolls, maybe ogres, maybe more. Something other than just goblins, right? Be the lore keeper outside of just lore. And when you learn these things, put them in your book. Write them down so they're in physical copy and you have them. Then uh, you have the labor of tales, which is a personal story that you must create. The same thing we have currently. You cannot have any help when creating the story. This must fit in some way, shape, or form into the goblin mythos, expanding the mythos and adding stories. Each witch doctor told their own, and some are on the get and some are not. you got to figure them out. I spoke of the burning sands, and one day I will tell that story here. But I did talk about Sucre a little bit. Then there's the labor of the tower, which is one of my favorites. And what you must do is you must take a task or a trial or whatever it is needed to do to earn a token from each of the witch doctors that came before you. And for those that have retired or are no longer here, a placer holder will be there. And this way, every witch doctor adds to it, and it gets a little bit challenging, more challenging and a little bit deeper as time goes on. And finally, the labor of telling, where you actually tell your vigil story, where you tell the story you wrote in the labor of tales to the crowd, unveil it for the first time, and tell many other stories for many people to listen and to hear. When you've completed all those things, as long as it is done in that two-year mark. At that two-year mark, you complete your telling, and you have the mixing of the blood ceremony, where you mix bloods with your teacher, forehead to forehead, hand to hand, not actual blood, 
and you become a witch doctor. You're given the witch doctor red mark. But remember, I said that there were three ceremonies, not two. And the final ceremony is for retirement. Witch doctor is something you do for as long as you can do, and there may come a point where you can no longer do it or no longer want to. But your legacy lives on, and what you do is two things. You create a placeholder trial to sit a la Avatar The Last Airbender uh, avatars, a la the history of the past. You place a placeholder trial that every witch doctor that comes after you will do, and then you pass your book down so that it can stay as a relic for Belagarth. And that is the rework for Witch Doctor. I'm super freaking stoked about it. I love it. It makes me so happy. Um, who are the... Well, if there are any questions about Witch Doctor, feel free to ask them. But who are the historic goblins? And what are the ages? So the ages of the world in Goblindom are the creation, which also is the golden age of goblins. This is when goblins were the most powerful. They were mostly true goblins. And they were very, very into running the world. This was when Sukra and Sifu came about. So those were the first two, right? We have Sifu, who is the first goblin witch doctor, and Sukra, who became essentially a proto-witch doctor using pre-Pisran magic, so magic that was really not very controllable. Then we have the Age of Retreat. The Age of Retreat is after the fall of Reth and goblin kind, and this was a really dark time. This is where the witch doctors Reki who was uh, one of the masters of the Warbraids and one of the last of, uh, of Sifu's apprentices, and Rend came from. Then we have Chita and uh, Kisna, who were in the time of the Age of Nizar. And the Age of Nizar is when Nebuchadnezzar ruled, and Chita was the goblin witch doctor who discovered Nebuchadnezzar first, realizing he was a reincarnation of Neb. And also, she was one of the three goblins, including Neb and Mober, who fought the dragon uh, to defeat, or at least save, what was left of Nizar. During the Age of Unification, uh, excuse me, during the Age of Tribes, uh, when after the fall of Nizar and the goblins spread out in tribes, uh, there was the uh, witch doctor of the Broken Bones tribe, known as Rakesh. I know very little of him. And then in the modern age, sort of, the age of unification after the creation of Horde and the, and the great works of King Israth, uh, are the modern witch doctors. So Skrade, Kazi, Div, Galia, Salamander, Hyksa, Gadget, Me, Hyamcord. Um, and then there's maybe a long time coming, uh, a new age. We do not know what it is called, but I and Dr. Galia believe that a new age is upon us. And then finally, there will be the Age of Restoration. We do not know when this is happening. So again, who are the, uh, the historical goblin witch doctors that we have? We have Sifu, we have Sukra, we have Chita, we have Reki, who was one of the last, oh, again, Sifu's last apprentice. We have Red, Rend, who was apprenticed under Klohaka, which we don't really know how it works because Klohaka isn't a goblin witch doctor. But stories are stories. And we have Rakesh. Uh, and we also have, um, and we cannot forget Keshna, uh, which is the goblin that discovered uh, the head of Neb and took it all the way to the underworld for Sifu to extract his soul, free it into the river. Um, so it is Keshna's fault that we have to deal with uh, the Neb head. So boo boo her. So those are the historic witch doctors. We're doing okay on time. Now, the importance of role-playing Belagarth to me is it's actually very important. It adds a whole other layer to the game. It makes it so much more fun, and it allows for a lot of story creation and a lot of more soft skills to be developed. You can use a lot of the soft skills you learn in Belagarth to really further yourself in life as well, and it makes the game more fun, especially if you get injured or you're not into the fighting to begin with. Um, so I really encourage having RP in Belagarth. And it doesn't just have to be monster dumb, although monster is really fun. Uh, it can also be human with uh, Dame Paladin, uh, Kaleida, and, and not Kaleida, Khalid, Hera, and all sorts of things. I apologize, Hera. I think it's Khalid. And um, uh, I, I, I just can't stress it enough how awesome roleplay in Bell can be. Because we don't have any structure and rules, we can really just play it how we want to and be very unique and free with it. Uh, there are other monster uh, RP titles. 
Um, so we've got Gracier for Skaven. I'm just going to list them. I'm not going to go too much into them. We've got Maton for Troll. Uh, we have Shaman for Ogre. We have Unwelcome One for Null. We have Esoteres for Deep One, and I've heard from some that there's actually a Lemurologist, but he's not a Lemur, which is kind of fun. Um, I'm really excited about this episode, and I hope you guys can see why. I want Goblin Witch Doctor to be known about and supported far and wide, and I also want people to feel empowered to create their own things as monster races grow and more people come and bring new things, right? Like, we've got more gnolls and we've got more lizards and we've got more trolls. And so as these races grow, they can add to the story and then Belagarth's entire tapestry becomes even more complex and beautiful. And I think that's just really awesome. I'm stoked about it. Um, I would love to hear any questions if you guys have them, but just throw them in the chat because I'll answer them as they come. Uh, we've pretty much hit the vast majority of my goals this evening, which is super awesome. And I hope you guys like the, the Witch Doctor Goblin we rework. Uh, we've done a lot of work together as a, a whole group, and I think it just gives a little bit more structure to the journey and emphasizes just the skills that you learn. The point of it is that as you've completed all of these labors, you really are someone who can get up in front of people and tell an hour-long story and keep their attention and be, able, be confident to do so. And I think that's a skill that's worth having. Uh, I'm very excited now. We're going to jump to um, one of my favorite things to do, which is how to take roleplay and mix it with the fighting that we do. I am, in a lot of ways, a stick jock at heart. But I also believe that you can make Belagarth fighting um, kind of silly and kind of fun and monstery and act and... You know, it does, doesn't have to just constantly be high-level stick chess. I have absolutely... Oh, no. I have absolutely nothing against high-level stick chess, mind you, but that's just kind of where I'm at. So I want to make sure that my... Okay, cool. It is working. So I do wonder... Hmm, we got some people here. We got some people here still. Cool. Uh, nobody fallen asleep yet? Are you guys still around? Hopefully nobody has uh, died with this story time. So here we go. Uh, let's see if this works. So hopefully you guys can actually hear the audio of this. Um, Pickles, would you mind letting me know if the audio works? Right? Bye, you don't know this side of the Science. So this is monsters doing cool things. See whose blessings smell you. So does the crescent moon. And I do hear a sister of the hollow so, has oh, asked. Yeah. So just so you know, this is me giving Thias a trial to get a um, Stolkep, which is a hobgoblin chain. This is just a very short trial. So enjoy, friends. Some role play Belagarth stick fighting. I don't remember what it's called, sorry. Stormcap! There we go. It's a Stormcap. <laughs> this will keep the bugs inside you, so when you inevitably so die, die as a hero, you go into the river of souls and you make Bulk there. die. You make him sick. You make him spew the bugs see, like, vile. First, you must prove to me. Prove to me that the Schlepperloopaloopala belongs to you, Ella. You know the fight, my friend. Let's battle. Every time you're gonna hit your sword, you gotta battle. Uh, 
can only be hiding so long. Woo! Also, damn, that hood looks good. Thank you, guys. The hollow you are in represents the hollow you are not. For you are not hollow, Thais. You are of the hollow. I like doing that. Nah, luck. Wow, just the arm, just the arm. Good though, good though, good though. The bugs, they hunt. You want the hollow? See who's chosen. I know you want it. Oh, I see your stab. Little hobbit. Fear me. And quake. No, not quite. If I was good at spinning. Six arms she has. Six for the sickle, for the axe. Six arms she has for the spear and the sword. Not quite on the staff. Very telegraphed. Two eyes she has ready to defeat. Nope. The world and watch its demise. One apprentice, five, five apprentices. Oh, no. we got a doctor in the house. Hi, Galia. Fear me. Did I say any of the stories Ooh. wrong? Ah. Rick, stories. this is for you, sister. Ooh. Ah. So this whole time five is going to be nice, but also it's two in a row. Two in a row. Not beat me once. You've done that many times. Two in a row. That is one. I will start calling until you know. You had me. I made a mistake. Little, little Amen. You want that one? No. 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 One. A little light, but there. Ooh. Ding. Dead. Next. Okay, Rick. There you go. <laughs> So Thias did the thing. Good job, Thias. That was fun. So that's kind of the beauty of um, of doing something like that, right? You have a, a trial, and after completing the trial, you actually get something that has an RP significance. And while doing the trial, you have kind of like an RP experience. I think that just adds so much to the game. Um, we do these trials in Ancient Warp, which is my, my realm, where you have to fight on a bridge and then you fight a final boss and then you take a flag from me. And I just find that that adds so much like buy-in to the group and the organization. And it has absolutely nothing to do with fighting. It has to do with the way we're framing just a fighting trial. So I think that's some of the really cool things about um, 
RP and Belagarth and the importance of RP and Belagarth and just what it can do. It can really allow for so much creativity to come out and so many different ways of interpreting things. I want to talk really briefly about my book. I'm really happy about this Witch Doctor book. So uh, my vision is that a Witch Doctor, when they retire, they pass down a book. And the reason for it is it's, it's a way for what was oral stories, right? Kazi started this as a way to keep the oral stories alive um, because they were disappearing. So it's all oral stories. And so having it written down is good, but having it written down where it's written down in your own words is better. That way, one witch doctor doesn't say it the same way as another witch doctor, and I think that's really, really important. So my book specifically does have some stories, but it's primarily a collection of written monster languages. I've got about seven or eight of them now in here. Maybe it's six, um, but I'm collecting them, and they were going to be a, a part of my Master Chronicler submission. I mean, it is a thing I'm doing. I'm collecting all of these languages. And the reason is because I want people to see how much diversity we have in this game already and how many hours and hours and hours people have put into uh, this sort of work. Um, I, I find it to be empowering that people are willing to do this all on volunteer and then as a community we grow in, together. So I really hope you guys have enjoyed this uh, jaunt down Witch Doctor Lane. Uh, it was admittedly shorter than I thought it would be. Um, and I, I was a little bit more concise than I was expecting. Uh, part of it is I didn't really go into all of the details of these historic witch doctors, um, but I really wanted time to show Thias's video. And if you guys want, I can go in more depth with these historic witch doctors and tell some stories this evening to keep this as a longer episode as we spoke about. Um, but I'd actually like to make my, my big announcement right now. Um, while a few of you are still here. So I, I, oh my goodness. Well, hello everybody. I wonder, uh, shout out to the crowd. Do you think it would be better if Goblin Storytime started an hour later? Make a couple adjustments here. Well, mayhaps you will let me know at some point. But in the meantime, here's my super exciting announcements. And I'm really excited about this. The first is the Banjax hosted NaNoWriMo challenge. Please go into the uh, Belagarth Chroniclers page or the Belagarth page that's posted there. I'm really, really excited about this one. I'm actually going to go to Storytime and do this. So I have decided, uh, with the support of many, that I am going to take Goblin Storytime and we are going to create our own channel. Um, I love Tanith, and I love the bench, and I love the bench network. Um, ah, earlier is not bad. So I, I really love the channel. I'm so excited about everything the bench has done. The bench has given me the legs to stand on to do this. However, I don't really want you guys to have ads. Uh, and I'd like to be able to see the chat on the window so people can see it in the recording, get more community engagement. Uh, for me, that's that's really what this is about. I'd love more questions and more conversations. And I know some of you guys are just hopping in now, so I'm even happy to keep this going a little longer and, and to answer a few questions if there are any. But again, a Goblin Storytime is going to be moving to our own uh, Twitch channel, and I'm going to get all that set up hopefully in the next week. Uh, and then next week uh, is Winter Wars Prep. So next week there will only maybe be a goblin story time uh, it is more likely that there will not be a goblin story time as it is the day before winter wars so i will see you all at winter wars i'm very excited for those of you who can go it's going to be a great event ideally the weather is good uh, but for the time being let's assume there's going to be no goblin story time no goblin story time episode 7 on the 5th of november instead we will come back on the uh, 12th of November uh, with our own channel, which is super, super exciting. So uh, I am so grateful again to the bench, which is Thursdays at uh, this time, so 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. Central, um, for giving me the opportunity and the legs to stand on to do story time, and we will continue supporting the bench 
as we move into our own channel. So I cannot begin to express my gratitude to all of you guys um, for being on Storytime. Like, I literally do this because of you. And um, the idea of having my own channel is kind of cool. I am excited to use it to kind of push more monster lore and more all of it. So with that being said, um, I'm going to open the floor to any potential questions that may arise. Uh, we're going to wish Stellar a happy birthday. Enjoy dinner. And um, yeah, thank you all so much for sitting through Goblin Storytime, listening to my stories and listening to me talk about Goblin Witch Doctor. Uh, Goblin Witch Doctor is all about being shepherds to the community and helping the community with the lore, the characterization, and the pushing the kits, pushing the RP, and showing that there's more than just fighting uh, while keeping old stories alive. So again, um, I'm going to open the floor to a couple questions. I do see a couple newer folk on that were not on earlier, and I think I might push Goblin Storytime back an hour. Um, I will see. We have all the flexibility. Again, thank you to the bench. Seriously, can't even begin to express that. Um, I'm going to give approximately two minutes for questions, but then I'm going to give you guys back the hour. I thought this was going to be a two-hour episode. turned out to be an hour episode, and that uh, works for me. I'm content with that. Frees us all. Um, that being said, everybody, the approximate one minute has been given. That was probably like 25 seconds. But thank you all so very much for coming to Storytime. I cannot begin to express my gratitude for having you guys sit under the mushroom cap with me. And I hope you enjoyed your stay. Uh, we will be back not this upcoming Tuesday, but the Tuesday after that, November the 12th, on our very own channel. And make sure to join the bench on Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on this Twitch link. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining Goblin Storytime. Remember, the witch doctors are watching, and you got to come do cool some monster, do some cool monster shit, so you can get shouted out for the monsters doing cool shit channel. So, shout out to Brazen and shout out to Thias for passing their hob and trial. Have a wonderful evening, everybody, and with that, we will end with some story time. <laughs> All right, let's go. Are you ready?